Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ryan Wegerson. I use pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm the Regional Admissions Manager for Cal Poly. Today, we're going to talk to a panel of our amazing current Mustang students from Cal Poly. We're going to hear a little bit about their experiences, some of the opportunities they've had, and why they feel ready day one once they graduate from Cal Poly. My name is Ryan again, um, and you'll see here my contact information if you have any questions. I'm based right out of Portland, Oregon, so not too far from many of you. Um, and I'm always free to answer any questions you have about the admissions process, um, the application, or, or anything in this coming year. And I can always connect you with any current students if you'd like to find out more about specific majors at Cal Poly. I'm always happy to connect you with those students. Next, I'd like to start introducing our current student panel. First up, we have Kayla Varney. Hi, Kayla. Thank you for being here. Hi, hi, everyone. I'm so, so stoked to be here. As Ryan said, my name is Kayla Varney. I am a fourth year business administration student with a concentration in information systems. And currently on campus, I'm a poly rep, so I give campus tours to prospective students. I'm in Delta Sigma Pi, which is a co-ed professional business fraternity housed under the College of Business. I'm a career peer advisor, so I help students um, with any business or career related questions that they might have. I'm also in Mustang Consulting, which is a student-run pro bono consulting firm on Cal Poly's campus. That is a mouthful. Um, if you want to hear more about my study abroad experience, I have the opportunity to intern in the summer, um, it was summer of 2019, um, in the Czech Republic. And I'm an out-of-state student as well. So my hometown is Mercer Island, Washington. Thank you, Kayla. Um, next, we're gonna hear from Max. How's it going, everybody? I'm Max Kruger. I am a third year biomedical engineering student. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm from Lake Oswego, Oregon. Um, yeah, I really love my time here at Cal Poly, uh, involved with poly reps as well. I think all of the student panel is. Um, really involved with QL Plus, which I'm sure I'll get to talk about later, and just a whole bunch of other things. The Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, um, Future Fuels, Surfing, Hiking, the whole whole 18 holes. Um, super fun time, super excited, so. Thank you, Max. And last, we're gonna hear from Bree, Bree Zadar. Hello, what's up everyone? My name is Bree Zidar. I use she and her pronouns and I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering major here at Cal Poly. Stoked um, but sad to be graduating this year. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, so also out of state. Um, and some of the things I've been involved with is right now I'm a poly rep, so give tours on campus like the rest of the crowd. I was an orientation leader. I was involved in the sustainability in um, branch of our student government. And I currently work at the California Cybersecurity Institute as a project manager and immersive set designer. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Bree. Um, we're going to just talk with our current student panel here about some, some questions we have, um, common questions for our students. Um, we're going to go ahead and get to those here in just a moment. All right. So I have um, some questions for you all. And um, I think we're going to start with Kayla and then go down to Max and Bree for each of these. Um, and if you have if you have something to contribute, great. If you have nothing to contribute to that question, no problem at all. My first question is, why did you choose Cal Poly? What was your initial reason for coming? And since then, since you've been a student, what have you learned about Cal Poly um, that you didn't expect? So I actually applied to Cal Poly because of the rec center, um, which is super ironic seeing how involved I am now at Cal Poly. Um, but it goes to show how so many different students find Cal Poly in so many different ways. Um, so initially applying, um, I didn't know much about Cal Poly. Um, being an out-of-state student, I didn't have much exposure to a lot of like CSU um, colleges and other colleges just truly out of state. I really wanted to go to the University of Washington. I had my extended family all go to UW, um, was really set on it. And then I actually did not get in and I was heartbroken. But um, 
for whatever reason, after my, you know, hearing about Cal Poly, um, I had only heard great things. I'd heard that students love the business administration major that I had gotten into um, and really had a great opportunity to enhance this learn by doing philosophy that we hold so closely to our hearts at Cal Poly. Um, and so as soon as I stepped on campus, unfortunately, I know it's a little bit difficult to do so now with COVID, um, but I knew that this was a place for me. We have open house, which is typically in the spring and provides an opportunity for admitted students to come and check out campus see all the different clubs and organizations that students could get involved in. Um, and I went to that and felt the energy, loved the students, got lost a couple of times and asked students for help. And everyone was just so nice and outgoing and welcoming. Um, so I went all in and since then have loved my Cal Poly experience. Um, ever since day one, stepping foot on campus um, at the end of my senior year of high school. Since then, um, in terms of I guess, um, not a myth, but something that I guess I've realized over my time at Cal Poly is how crucial this learn by doing philosophy is um, to every single major, um, every single student at Cal Poly on campus. So myself as a business administration student, this will apply a lot more to Max or Bree, who are these uh, engineering students on campus. But um, I've really had the opportunity to have hands-on experiences, um, whether that be through accounting or my current concentration of information systems um, that have allowed me to um, you know, find a full-time job after college. So already as a fourth year, I have a job lined up post-college. And I 100% think that's um, entirely attributed to the Learn by Doing philosophy um, that Cal Poly really enforces. Thank you, Kayla. Um, that's something that always shocks me as well about Cal Poly students. 80% of our graduates already have that job lined up by the time they get their diploma, which is just incredible. Max, um, what do you think? So, I was in a similar situation. I, uh, like Kayla, I, I had a bunch of choices um, for me for school and I could not pick one. I was just like torn between like four different schools, all of them fantastic. Um, and ultimately I really just sat down and looked at, uh, <clears throat> there was three distinguishing factors I would say um, for why I chose Cal Poly. The first of which is the focus on undergraduates. So here at this university, it's an undergraduate focused university. So that means there's no graduate students sort of um, there taking up a lot of other resources that other universities might have. So when I looked at other universities, I noticed that students everywhere were doing cool things, incredible things here in college that I could have only dreamed of in high school. But when you're at Cal Poly, you're actually doing those like your first year, your second year. And I've had the chance to be a part of things like I couldn't even imagine them, which have been it's just been so fun. And then secondly, San Luis Obispo is just an amazing place in general. I wake up every morning and I'm just like, dang, I'm so lucky to live here on the Central Coast. I go, I like work at a winery, which is super fun. Um, I get to go surfing in the morning before class. Really, I can't imagine like a better place to go to school. And then finally, just like the learn by doing. I'm getting into class where I'm getting to build things and sort of uh, make my dreams a reality. We have a really great club system. And with this club system, like I have a friend who he wanted to do stuff with the weather balloons. And so he literally wrote an email and filled out an application. And a month later, Cal Poly gave him a thousand dollars and he was able to send weather balloons into space, which has just been super cool. So if you have an idea here at Cal Poly, Cal Poly really enables you to do it and there's no crazy ideas. Um, I've seen a weather balloon club. I've seen a ukulele club. Um, they'll support you. It's just a super awesome place to um, grow and develop. Thank you, Max. I love that, that students are willing to try new things even if they fail the first time. That's fantastic. Bree, what about you? What was your initial reason for coming to Cal Poly and what did you find that you did not expect once you came here? So being from Ohio, my only goal when applying to college was to get the heck out of Ohio. Um, nothing against it, love it, but I thought it was really important to kind of expand my perspective. So I only was looking at schools really on the West Coast. And truthfully, I kind of picked Cal Poly on a complete whim of things. Um, I remember my mom was out in California and she texted me and she was like, think you'd love Cal Poly, like super chill vibes. 
And literally from that text message, I was like, oh, you know what? I bet I will really like it. And so I ended up kind of taking a leap of faith and going here and only can echo what Kayla and Max said in that it has been such a phenomenal experience. Um, I think something for me that I really didn't expect um, out of Cal Poly, but also out of college was how um, well-rounded not only every student is here, but also just the education process as a whole. So that ranges anything from, I remember my first year being so surprised that I was going to college, but also going backpacking for my first time and learning how to surf and doing all these things that I never really pictured my college experience would be like learning how to rock climb, um, all these things. But at the same time, within my education itself, especially these last two years, the amount of like wide range of classes I've been able to take, whether that be learning how to weld or learning how to like build engines which is literally something I do in my classes and I truthfully came to Cal Poly having no idea how to like fill my car up with gas so we've come a long way um so not only has it been really cool that way but also something awesome in one of my latest classes is we're learning how to pair social justice with mechanical engineering which again is just something I never thought I would be able to do to think about um, race and gender and socioeconomic status as part of my college experience as an engineer. So the way that every person you meet has the, all these different sides of them that you would never guess, but at the same time, every experience you're having is also just like that. So Cal Poly has been such a wild ride, but the best one I've ever been on. Thank you so much, Bree. Um, next, we're going to talk about the San Luis Obispo area. What's it like? What are some things that you really like to do? What stands out about that area and what you can do there? Um, Kayla, again, we're going to start with you. Cool. So I think something that can be really hard to translate to prospective students um, for y'all about the San Luis Obispo area is just how outdoorsy it truly is. I mean, you can only really get a grasp for it until you've kind of hung out in this area, but I'll try to give you a little bit of an overview. Um, where I'm sitting in my room right now, if I were to turn my camera around, I'm looking at Bishop's Peak, which is one of three mountains that we hike for the Tri-Tip Challenge. Um, so it's really crazy how, you know, you have the opportunity to get outdoors, but it's literally like right next to you. It's not like you're driving like 45 minutes to get there. I can literally walk and like go hike this mountain from my house, which is just totally bonkers. Um, but um, that's been a really awesome way to get outdoors, doing a lot of hiking. Um, in the slow area too, I recently picked up surfing. We have 10 beaches within 10 miles, so there's always a fun way to get outdoors. Um, and then additionally too, I think something that really makes slow, slow, um, or San Luis Obispo that is, is the community aspect um, that we really try to foster, especially with um, just other community members that may not be like students at Cal Poly. Um, so if you're going to downtown slow and um, you know, setting a coffee shop for school or something like that. Most of the coffee shops are going to be like family owned or small businesses rather than like having a huge like Starbucks or something like that. So I think that's been a really fun aspect of my college experience as well is being able to not only like immerse myself in the student experience, but also the greater um, San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly environment and community as well. Um, so on top of that too, like every Thursday night, there's a farmer's market um, where the streets of San Luis Obispo are entirely blocked off. And you can go and get fresh produce or different meals. Um, and now because of COVID, there's even a smaller farmer's market that goes on um, in a different location that I now still get to get my fresh produce from. Um, and it's really cool to see, again, like San Luis Obispo community members coming out to support one another. Um, so that community aspect is something that I really want to hit on. And then as well, that outdoorsy nature that we really get to embrace around the San Luis Obispo area too. Thank you, Kayla. I also really enjoy Farmer's Market in San Luis Obispo. Max, what about you? Um, I think San Luis Obispo, after having come to Cal Poly and visited, is potentially one of the best places to grow up and like spend in your youth. Like Kayla said, outdoors is everywhere. And to go to college here is so fun. So San Luis Obispo is a college town. Um, so whenever you go somewhere, you'll see like your friends from class or you'll see um, like you'll see like people you know uh, another thing I always thought was really cool is we have a bunch of really good sandwich so shops 
which is like the most random thing ever. But like, there's Dutch crunch bread, which I had never had before. And it's literally so good. Um, probably the best sandwich or shops you've ever, I've ever had. Um, but you can just go to those and like, you'll run into friends. You can go to the beach, run into friends. Like there's just so much going on socially. <laughs> Dutch crunch is the best thing I've ever tasted. There's so much going on like socially that you can just always like find someone who's down to go hike, um, go get a sandwich from one of the sandwich shops. Uh, the location is amazing. So you have both LA, San Diego, and also the Bay Area all within like a weekend trip away. I um, mean, not like a weekend, but like it's easy to get there. And so uh, I spent a weekend in LA and visited my cousin. Um, it's really easy to go to the Bay Area and visit my friends. It's like, I feel like I have all of California uh, accessible to me. And there's a whole lot of ways to get around town. Um, overall, it's just, I'm, it's always fun. I'm always doing something like never bored. Um, it's just such a fun time. Big Sur is an hour away and you can just go camping. Like it's incredible the nature we get. So uh, such a fun time. Thanks, Max. I was just going to mention Big Sur. Um, growing up in that area, Big Sur was just such a, an exciting place to go visit and camping at Lime Kiln is my absolute favorite if you ever get a chance. Brie, what about you? Okay. I just like to preface this with, I don't think it's fair because Kayla and Max have really good answers and I don't want to just echo them. So the whole time I was like, what else do I love about slow? And obviously the list was endless. So I came up with some things. Um, Kayla had mentioned that there is a really big community feel in the town of San Luis Obispo itself. And I would just like to really harp on that for a moment. I know when you're thinking about picking a college, you're not like, oh, like, what are the adults in the area going to be like? Because that's kind of an odd question, but it really is so important in setting the tone for your college experience. And I think something special about Slow is that not only is it like so small outside of the college, but it's also like everyone is so kind. And a fun little anecdote I'd like to tell you is that um, after my first year, my family went on vacation to Hawaii and I met this like five-year-old boy who had a San Luis Obispo shirt on and I was like oh my gosh like I go to school there and his parents were like no way and I ended up started babysitting for him and two other families that I babysat for through like completely different friends both of them ended up being each of his godparents so it's like three random families I met and they were all like best friends and it just is kind of consistently like that even today I'm fortunate enough to have class in person for one of my labs and my teacher was saying how her son goes to school with one of the kids I babysat. So it really is just a small town. But again, it's really cool to kind of be in your whole college world and you're walking to get food on a Sunday morning and you just see the kindest and happiest people. It really does kind of make it feel like you are somewhere so incredibly special. And I think with that, um, obviously the Cal Poly name goes a long way outside of college, but so does San Luis Obispo. The amount of people I've met, even back in Ohio or in Los Angeles, who are like, no way, like you're so lucky to be living in San Luis Obispo. Like it is such a wonderful place. I'll never forget how awesome my time is there. And so it is like, obviously there's endless opportunity and room for fun, room for fun, but it's also something that is like really cool to go back to. Something that Kayla and Max didn't mention um, is that we're also like 20 minutes away from some of the greatest wineries um, across the entire Central Coast. And obviously it doesn't apply to you until you're in the 21 Club, um, but it still is really cool to, again, just have something more to do. Thank you, Brie. And I'm going to start the next question off with you um, so that you get a chance to share first. Um, so my next question is, what kind of research opportunities have you seen in your program? And do you have any specific experiences you can share? And are these experiences widely available to students in your programs? Yeah, so um, research at Cal Poly is really awesome um, for a couple of reasons. One, Cal Poly is primarily an undergraduate university, which means you're not competing with like master's or PhD students for research opportunities. You're doing it, um, you're competing again, or not competing, but the opportunities are way more wild, widely available at a young age. And something really cool within the mechanical engineering program um, is, your senior project. And it's not technically like quote unquote research, but 
it pretty much is just under a different name. And what that is, you get paired up with um, a different company and industry. And for an entire year, you are um, defining a problem, designing a product, and you actually get to build that product for them. So one of my best friends, Graham, he's on this team right now where they're working with Edwards Life Science, and they are redesigning um, the little piece of some material that replaces your heart valve. So something Graham is actually working on over the course of the entire year is going to then be used in commercial use for people's heart valves, which is awesome compared to my senior project, which is going back and forth to the Central Valley to um, make a solar powered unit for grapes to dry and turn into raisins, which at first I was like, what even the heck does that mean? But it's really cool to be a mechanical engineer, to have learned about solar and to learn about heat transfer and energy and all these things, and to be able to come into my fourth year and take a problem that's happening on a farm of not being able to sustainably dry their grapes into raisins and use my engineering skills to go and fix that. And the wide range of things that gets completed within the senior project is like insane, like I said, whether it be you're fixing people's heart valves or you're drying grapes or you're creating a roller coaster in New Zealand. My friend Ian is doing that and I'm so jealous because he actually gets to go to New Zealand at the end of the quarter. Um, but the amount of research you can do is really endless. Um, and it's so, not only is it widely available, but something like that is mandatory. So it is just so cool to be able to finish college and actually build something and have something to your name that you can talk about in interviews, but also just as something you'd be confident in yourself that you built a full scale 20 foot by a hundred foot garage that dries grapes. Off to y'all. That is so cool. Uh, wow. Thank you so much, Bree. Uh, and Max, how about you? Have you had a chance to do any research yet? Yeah. So, um, Research like here, I mean, Bree hit the nail on the head and she used some awesome examples. I know for me, I worked in a uh, lab where we were using tissue engineering and cell engineering, being biomedical engineering, and this was related to my major. Um, and we were making blood vessels essentially in little boxes through Dr. Cardinal's lab. Um, and we were using these blood vessel models to test drugs on them and see how they respond. So they're real human blood vessels that we would keep alive in these little boxes. Um, it was crazy. We would be able to like spin them and like, so, like make your own blood vessel and be able to like test drugs on it and all this stuff, which is just crazy. And I was able to actually do that my second year. Um, I would have been able to do it my first year if I just applied myself sooner. Um, what, what was crazy to me is I've heard about research at all these other universities and um, it's like people, undergrads are just like cleaning dishes or something or they're having like, we like grind their way just to even like get their foot in the door where I just went to my professor's office hours. I picked a professor who I thought was doing interesting work, walked in, talked about how I can get join the team. They brought me up to speed with safety and training. And then I showed up on a Friday and they're like, you want to make some blood vessels? And I was like, heck yes. Like I couldn't imagine a better Friday. Um, and so then I just spun some uh, little blood vessels and went crazy. Uh, so it's been a super cool time. There's a ton of cool research opportunities. And if there's not one that you're uh, specifically interested in, there's a lot of ways to start it. I know a guy who started a brain computer interface um, research project in conjunction with uh, one of our professors. So he's been contacts from like Elon Musk, not Elon directly, but like Neuralink, if you've heard of that. Um, so just crazy to see like how if you if there's something you want to start and you have the ambition and the willpower to do it, you can uh, you can really get a lot of traction going here. So super cool. Thanks, Max. It really is very unique that at Cal Poly you can you know experience those kinds of research projects um, in your first or second year um, as students at Cal Poly. Kayla, how about you? I'm going to spin this question a little bit because I'm the college of business, so I am not of course, in like sciences or engineering in that regard where like research looks like a typical research or what you might think it looks like. Um, so I'm going to touch on um, a senior project or a start that you can create as its own type of research per se. Um, so basically like 
finding a solution to a need that needs to be filled in society. Um, one of my friends, um, Ryan Meffert, he actually is working full-time with NeoCharge, which is a startup that started out of the hothouse in, at Cal Poly, which is just basically like an incubator for startups to grow and have mentorship to help move them in the right direction. And NeoCharge is a smart splitter for if you're charging your electric vehicle, um, there's, there's a very like unique port in order to properly charge your, if it's a Tesla, your Tesla, um, that you have to plug it into in your um, garage. And this port only aligns with the port that you, where you plug your dryer into. And so they're like, well, people can't typically like charge their Teslas if their dryer is plugged into the wall. Um, so they created a product that where they can um, plug in the smart splitter into the wall and then have their dryer and their Tesla charge out of it. Um, so of course that research isn't gonna be like incredibly scientific, but it's looking like doing research on a product or the target market, um, all that jazz. So kind of a fun little spin, but a really cool way for other students to get involved if they wanna do something beyond Cal Poly. Thank that you so, so much, Kayla. Nice. Um, and I'm so glad to, to hear someone bring up that that Center for um, Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, it's such an incredible program at Cal Poly and, and super unique. And really, um, that is the equivalent of research really at, in the College of Business. It, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, and in all of our majors, there, there are, are ways for you to solve um, you know, problems in the real world to come up with these solutions. And many times it is um, across different disciplines with, with students and other majors. Fantastic, thank you so much, Kayla. Um, I wanna see um, how many of you have had study abroad experiences so far? I know last year was kind of a wash, um, but I know Kayla, you've had an opportunity to do, to do study abroad. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about what that experience was like working with the study abroad program and um, what you needed to know ahead of time? Absolutely. So Cal Poly is super on it. Um, we have our, our, the percentage of students, um, I'm sure Bree, Max, or Ryan can remind me of what that is, um, the, of students that study abroad, um, but it's actually larger than the national average. So it's very typical that we're sending students to go study abroad. Um, and so for my instance, um, I knew I wanted to go in the summer. Um, typically Cal Poly students, you'll see them going abroad their fall quarter of their junior year. Um, and you know, meeting other students from other colleges or organizations, whatever they're traveling through. Um, but I personally chose to do an internship abroad because as a business student, I wanted to see how international business works um, you know, in my first person and, and be able to experience that for my own. Um, so I, um, at the beginning of my sophomore year, so I went abroad my, the summer after my sophomore year, fall, like within the first couple of weeks, I went to an information session about the program that I wanted to go into, which was CIEE, um, and had just an awesome time hearing about how to get involved, where to apply, what the deadlines are, um, you know, maybe the intricacies of applying and what that looks like on the back end. Um, so I really felt like going into that application, I was set up and ready to go, knowing that I'd be able to get into it for the summer. Um, there's also a study abroad advising office. I have um, one of my good friends, Kevin and Kumar, that had the opportunity to work there. Um, and they said it's a really cool experience where they work with students one-on-one -on -one to ensure that students can go and study abroad if they choose to do so. Um, but for my own personal experience, I was in the Czech Republic. I have fam uh, an extended family that all lives there. So it was really cool for me to be able to experience the culture um, and reconnect with a lot of my extended family that I hadn't seen since I was two or three. And of course, I don't remember them. So that was really awesome. And then on the weekends, of course, we would be traveling around. Um, that experience to intern abroad was really unique because most students do actually like, take classes and go to school when they're abroad. Um, but, you know, I had the opportunity to work with a small startup um, and basically find different ways to um, help them expand and go to market with their product. Thank you, Kayla. Um, for my next question, I'm going to direct it to Max first. Um, Max? Um, how does Cal Poly connect students in your major with internship opportunities or with future employers? So there's a lot of ways to get connected. Um, one of my favorites and the one that like blew my mind, first of all, was uh, it was um, the career fair. Uh, my freshman year, I went fall quarter and uh, I walked into this room freshman didn't know anything and 
uh, like I had been taking my intro classes, I walk in and I was blown away. Like so many companies all over the place, just um, with like like Apple, Tesla, all these companies were there. Um, like any big name you can think of was here recruiting, which just blew my mind. I would like go up to like a Boeing recruiter and be like, hey, like I'm Max, nice to meet you. Um, I'm gonna work for you in like three years or something. Um, not really looking to work at Boeing any further because it's aerospace. I'm more interested in BMED um, as that's my major, but it was just crazy to go see like and talk to people who work at these companies, learn about how I can really focus my studies to potentially fit in their company. I mean, I could just get the chance to apply. So the career fair is something I really recommend going to go there every quarter, develop those professional skills. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of companies, they, they come to Cal Poly wanting to hire Cal Poly grads. And so um, these companies, like I went to a Tesla recruiting session and like had a one-on-one -on -one with a Tesla recruiter, had an interview as a freshman, which is just crazy um, because Tesla is like this company that I don't know, Elon Musk started and I was like, there's no way I could ever work for Elon. But um, yeah, it was crazy. And um, a lot of clubs will have a lot of recruiting too. And so Cal Poly alumni are super, super um, involved with being Mustangs. And so uh, they'll come back and like look for people who are uh, specifically like from Cal Poly. And like, they're always like, you'll see in club group messages and everything, there'll be people like, hey, like, anyone interested in applying for an internship at Adobe or XYZ company. And so um, it's super cool. I had an internship as a freshman um, and it was just like a great experience to just build that professional portfolio and that career experience. So a lot of really cool ways. I would recommend the career fair the most. Thank you, Max. Um, Brie, how about you? Yeah, so again, I can only echo what Max said. Our career fair is phenomenal, but really agree with the Cal Poly alumni thing. Um, the current job I work now at the Cybersecurity Institute, I got because one of my friends who's a year older than me reached out to me and she was like, hey, I'm working here. I really think you'd like it. I'm going to put in a good word for you. And within a week, they called me and they're like, please come in for an interview. So it's really cool just to, again, to know that like Cal Poly is so highly spoken of, but also like your peers and the people you meet along the way are so there to help you. Um, additionally, something else really cool that I think Cal Poly really prepares you for is because our school motto is learn by doing and so you have to take so many labs and you have to, like I was talking about earlier, actually build things and have these hard set skills of knowing how to weld metal and knowing how to, I had to build a scooter for one of my classes last year. And to then go into a job interview, which, you know, most people are like, wow, I really have to prepare for. I'm so nervous because, of course, I'm nervous, too. But you go into these job interviews and they're like, tell me about a time when you had to build something for strength as opposed to stiffness. And instead of panicking or thinking of something theoretical, I could so easily think back to like four of my classes where I'm like, oh, of course, we built that my second year. And then my third year, we built on behalf of that design. So I would say not only does Cal Poly have an amazing career fair where there's so many companies that specifically seek out Cal Poly students, but also the skills you learn while you're here are set up so perfectly so that when you go into the workforce, you're ready and confident. Thank you, Bree. Um, Kayla, you said that you already have your full-time job lined up already. How did you get connected with that job? And what, what about professors um, in the College of Business? Do they help also connect students with those jobs? Totally. So I am a part of Delta Sigma Pi, which is a professional co-ed business fraternity. Um, and brothers within the fraternity actually work at Protivity, which is a management consulting firm that I'll be working at in the fall and reached out and thought that I would love the opportunity. Um, so I, just like Max and Bree, attended the career fair, had the opportunity to chat with, you know, people that had actually been in the chapter that I am a part of, but also um, meet new other employees that are currently at the company. Um, so directly the involvement that I was involved, that I am still involved in is like what got me my job, which is super like important to note, just to say that what you get involved with at Cal Poly really can take you so far and then provide a lot of incredible opportunities for you. 
Um, before I touch on the note with the professors, um, within the College of Business itself, um, we have the Career Readiness Center, which is where I work as a career peer advisor. And I have the opportunity to help students with their resumes, cover letters, interviewing, networking skills, literally go through like start to finish. Here's what a mock interview is going to look like. Here's how you search LinkedIn. Uh, incredible opportunities for students to already kind of have this learn by doing ready to go mindset on going into the career fair um, and also just applying to jobs as well. So with that too, professors are really incredibly supportive. A lot of the professors that are currently within the College of Business itself are actually like on the board of directors or are still working full time for a lot of these companies that um, we so strive to work for post-college. Um, so I've had the opportunity to do an informational interview with um, CC Paragabagar, who's an incredible accounting professor within Cal Poly, hear about her time at throughout all the different career steps she's taken, all the different companies she's worked at and now serves as on the board of directors uh, for Point B, which is a consulting firm based in Seattle. So hearing about her experience is really cool um, and also allows me to have more insight into industry. I haven't had the opportunity to be connected to a job directly through a professor, but I've been exposed to a lot of different career paths because of their previous career path themselves. One other thing to note as well within the College of Business, um, well, actually Cal Poly as a whole hosts three career fairs per year. So one in the fall, winter, and spring, essentially every quarter, fall being the most popular career fair, seeing that a lot of students are really looking to line, um, line up their internship or full-time job. Um, but then additionally, within the College of Business, there are 18 concentration clubs, concentrations like accounting, information systems, marketing, entrepreneurship, really anything under the sun business. And each concentration club typically hosts their own career fair as well. So if you're super interested in marketing, you can go to the marketing career fair. Or if you're super interested in finance, you can go to the finance career fair. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, again, this is just speaking from experience. So within the College of Business, that really allow full exposure to um, internships, jobs, full-time opportunities. Thank you, Kayla. Um, I'm going to direct the next question to Bree first. Um, Bree, so um, as you know, at Cal Poly, you have to apply to a specific major. And I'm sure you can remember being a senior in high school and not, you know, necessarily knowing for sure exactly what you want to do. Um, do you have any advice for students who are still kind of deciding on majors, like how they can make that decision? And also, how easy is it to change majors at Cal Poly once you get there? Sure. Um, I would love to talk about that. So obviously it's really an abnormal situation to be 17 and be thinking like, what am I going to study in college so I can decide what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? And truthfully for me, I had no idea you actually had to pick a major at Cal Poly. So I came in surprised that I was a mechanical engineer, which is like not the typical experience at all. But Cal Poly has an awesome feature on their website where you can plug in things that either you like to study or you know you want to be or a type of field you want to work in. And it tells you possible majors that you would that seem like they would be a good fit for you. Um, that being said, I think one of the most important things is one or two, two really important things. One, reach out to people, any adults or college students, you know, ask them about their major, feel free to email any of us or reach out to Cal Poly to talk to students in a certain um, field that you might be interested in, but also um, don't uh, apply to a major just because you think you'll get in. So if you know you want to study biomedical engineering, or you know you want to study biology, don't apply as a agricultural communication student because you think you have an easier chance of getting in. Apply to what you love, apply to what you're passionate for. And if it works out, it'll work out. That being said, um, about one in three to one in four Cal Poly students do end up changing their major. And the process looks a little bit different for everyone. But since you do pick your major um, before you come to college, the first classes you're taking your first year, your first quarter are major specific. So you find out pretty quickly whether or not you like your major. You know, there's not really like you have to wait till your third year. You pretty much know by at least your first year. So that makes the process of change a lot easier. Um, that being said, in my experience, at least with some of my friends, switching your major within a college is a lot easier. So let's say my second year, I was like, you know what, I like mechanical engineering, but I love civil engineering, I'm going to switch. That switch is going to be a little bit easier, because I've already taken a lot of courses that count as civil engineering courses. But let's say I woke up 
I wake up tomorrow and I say, I love Kayla Varney so much. I want to be a business student. I'm already in my fourth year. That's going to be a little bit more difficult of a change. I'm going to have to take a trial quarter in business. And then I'm probably going to have to be here for a little bit more than just the rest of the year, probably like three more years. So it is a very different process based on what you're trying to switch into and when you're trying to do it. That being said, it is a lot easier than people make it seem. Fantastic advice. Um, and Max or Kayla, do either of you have anything to add to that? I think uh, Breeden hit the nail on the head. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like I was looking at changing my major because I went my second week and got to see a SpaceX rocket launch with Cal Poly um, Rocket Club, which was super cool. We got to get on to Santa Barbara and watch like the SpaceX rocket shoot up and land. Um, and after that, I was like, all right, that's it. I'm gonna be aerospace. That was the coolest thing ever. So I looked at switching um, and switching within your college is pretty much as easy as almost filling out a Google form. Um, so if you, let's say you, you apply as an engineer, get in as an, uh, like a civil engineer and decide to switch in, it's like aerospace. Um, as long as you have the grades and you're doing well and you fill out a Google form pretty much, you'll be switched in like a quarter. So yeah, like Bree said, not too difficult. Thank you so much. Um, and Kayla and I will start with you for this question. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about out of state tuition and scholarships, right? Um, as an out of state tuition, uh, out of state student, you're paying quite a bit more tuition than an in-state student. And your freshman year scholarships are kind of hard to come by. So I want to find out from each of you, what kind of scholarship opportunities were you able to find after your first year, you know, within your different programs and departments, and maybe some advice you have for students who are looking for private scholarships. Totally. Um, from experience, I actually, I found with Cal Poly, to be completely honest, it's a little bit difficult to look for scholarships because we're not a private school, we are public. So we're under the CSU education system, therefore it's going to be pretty much state funded if you're looking to get um, any scholarships. So kind of backtracking a little bit, I would almost look while you're in your senior year of high school to be applying to local scholarships in your area. That's what I did. Um, there was like a rotary program scholarship that I applied for. There was a couple of volunteering scholarships that I applied for. Really my senior year, I kept my eyes open. Um, and by my freshman year, I had the opportunity to cover most of housing and books because a lot of these private scholarships that I had, you know, found all were pushed towards these books and housing and everything. Um, but other than that, each year I'm awarded around $1,000 on an academic scholarship out of state um, that Cal Poly has awarded me. So that's been really often helped with my tuition itself. Um, but I'm, I, I hope Max and Bree, I don't have the best um, advice or thoughts on kind of post first year looking for scholarships, but hopefully back, Max and Bree might. Thank you, Kayla. Um, you really will thank yourself later if you apply for those private scholarships now in your senior year. They really do end up adding up. Max, how about you? What was your experience like? Um, yeah, so like Kayla said, private scholarships are a great avenue. There is a Cal Poly scholarship application form um, that refreshes every single year and um, gets like rolling scholarship acceptances throughout the year. And so every year before the school year, I just filled that out, updated um, first year. I didn't get too many scholarships, but my second year I was fortunate to get a scholarship from there. Um, so that was pretty exciting. And then uh, some big advice that I have is um, taking classes over the summer is actually in-state tuition for out-of-state students. And so I did that this summer, even though I was back home in Oregon um, I took summer classes and I got them at an actually reduced rate. So it was actually cheaper than it, what it would have been if I was like in state during the year. Um, so taking a summer quarter is definitely awesome. Um, just like even one or two classes while you maybe have an internship is a great way to do it. And so, uh, yeah, plus if you do have to take classes where you have to stay in San Luis Obispo, um, San Luis Obispo in the summer is incredible. 75 every single day, surf, amazing, lots of friends. Um, it's a good time. So that's my advice. That's fantastic advice, Max. Thank you. Bree, do you have anything to add about scholarships? 
Um, last little thing about scholarships is after your first year, there's a lot of really specific scholarships that I don't know if they're publicly funded, but they're through Cal Poly through that scholarship app. So I did the same thing as Max did. It's like, I want to apply for scholarships. And I actually got a list of like 25 different scholarships to then choose and do further applications to. And a lot of them were like, oh, like you're a woman in engineering or a woman in a STEM field or you are showing leadership on campus or like even I think there was one that was dumb as like prove that you brighten people's days and I was like say less I of course I do um so there's scholarships for anything and um one piece of advice I would give is just because the scholarships only like five hundred dollars a year or less than a thousand don't not apply to it uh, because those really do add up and any money that you can save now and not have to pay back in student loans is so wonderful. Thank you. That was great advice from all three of you about scholarships. I know that that's something on the mind of a lot of Oregon students. Um, I have one last question for you all. Um, I'm going to start with Max. And I want to know, what has your experience been with clubs and organizations on campus? What's that? What's the campus like in, in that respect? And, and tell us about some of your favorite experiences there. So, like I said earlier, the club system really is what makes, I would say, Cal Poly uh, worthwhile and just, um, like, incredible. There's really nothing I've seen like it at other schools. Um, there's such a big club culture where students are coming together, collaborating, and creating solutions to problems or things they're passionate about. And I honestly think the best learning happens in these clubs and maybe not the classrooms. The classrooms, education is world class. Um, but I, I've had the chance to work in entrepreneurial teams, developing a product, like where I, I looked around and I was like, these people are like the next, like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, like they are so smart. We are making this like crazy distributive computing, um, project. And we would at the end pitch it to investors. It was like the craziest thing. And that's happened to me. Like so many different times. I just dove headfirst into so many different clubs and I'm just constantly blown away by the people I get to work with and the projects we get to tackle. Um, I learned so much just by being in the room with them. And uh, a lot of them, QL Plus is one club that I'm really involved in. I'm an officer there. And so what we do is we engineer special uh, solutions for people with disabilities. And so um, that was super cool to get involved with. I was able to uh, hone some engineering skills, add some um, engineering projects to my resume. But really, I was able to learn a lot about engineering and working with people and teams. And that ultimately ended up helping me in classes later because I did that as a first year. Um, and so it's just such a worthwhile experience. It's so fun getting to work with people who are also passionate about the same things you are. It's a great social outlet. Clubs are just really, I feel like, the bread and butter of um, the, my college experience at least. And so it's just such a good time. Thanks, Max. I'm gonna hit Kayla next. Kayla, tell us a bit about your experience in clubs on campus. Totally. So from my freshman year, I made it a point to get really involved, um, seeing that I only have four years on Cal Poly's campus. And as Max touched on, there's just so many clubs to get involved with and really help to hone in on my education and expand it as well. Um, so from my perspective, just before I go into like what I'm involved with in particular, I think the reason why I love Cal Poly so much is because there's no, there's not one predominant like club or organization on campus that everyone has to get involved in. It really is like choose your own path, make your own experience in whatever clubs or organizations you get involved with. Um, and I, I'm sure Mac and Breed can talk to that too, but I think that's been like such a pivotal part of my college education and experience. So um, starting at Cal Poly, I got involved in Delta Sigma Pi, which is the co-ed professional business fraternity, um, which um, is of course professional, but also allowed me to build a lot of my social network. Um, that's actually how I got involved in Poly Rips, which is our campus ambassador program. And um, there, was a, there was someone in my chapter that was like, oh my gosh, I think you'd love being a tour guide. You should come and apply. And here I am today. Um, so a lot of the um, experiences or clubs or extracurriculars outside of Delta SIG have um, been because of I've known someone in Delta SIG that is involved elsewhere. Um, but again, truly um, really enhances this learn by doing experience. And 
um, really allows you to meet a lot of different people across campus because it does bring so many students together. Thank you, Kayla. Um, now to Bree. Bree, tell us about your experience with clubs and organizations on campus. Um, so I think clubs really are what makes Cal Poly so special. I think on average students are involved in what three to four clubs. And what's cool is clubs range anything from like serious clubs like Delta Sigma or um, QL plus like Max was talking about to like hammock club or hummus club or hiking club. So it's really cool to kind of be able to have like your feet in a lot of different ponds. Personally, I'm involved in poly reps. I was involved with ASI student government, which was really fun. Um, my freshman year, I was pretty big in ethical eating club, which is vegan club, which is like kind of nerdy and embarrassing, but whatever. Um, but I think what's really fun is it allows you to have like such a wide breadth of network. So not only do you do I just know mechanical engineers, but I also know all my friends and poly reps who are a plethora of different majors and obviously before COVID, but it's really fun living with people who are in different majors and are each involved in their own three to four clubs. And it's like, oh, who's coming over? Like, is that Perry from Cal Poly Accounting or is that going to be Lydia from poly reps? So it really is. You get to know so many different people and um, again, just be presented with so many different opportunities, which is super fun. Thank you so much, Bree, and thank you to all three of our panelists today. Um, huge shout out to Kayla, Max, and Bree for sharing your experiences and your awesome perspectives. It's super valuable to all of our prospective students out there. Um, thank you to all of our attendees today. Um, we have lots of other ways for you to also connect with campus during this time. Um, so for example, um, you can go ahead and um, learn more about campus. And we also have a summer webinar series that you can also be involved in. Um, and we have, um, for the next two days, I will be hosting admissions information sessions. Um, you can find those links there and in the chat as well. And we hope to see you um, again at one of these events. And we hope you enjoyed your time with us and learned a lot about Cal Poly. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is really helpful.